When I tell people I have an animal sanctuary, many think it is a wildlife sanctuary. Some think it is a dog and cat rescue centre. When I explain it is called a poultry place and is a refuge for chickens, ducks and turkeys, many are surprised. To many people, the chicken, the duck and the turkey represents food, not an animal you'd give sanctuary to. As a society, we grimace when we hear about dogs and cats being used as meat in other countries, and we see those images of whales being hunted down in the oceans to be served up on a plate. At the same time, we cut into a chicken breast, carve up a turkey, and go out to get some barbecued Peking duck without a second thought. Most of us don't consider the animals we eat in the same class as the animals we live with. Your pet dog, your pet cat, very different to the animals you eat. For most people, their encounters with poultry are when they're in the supermarket shopping or when they sit down to dinner. Us humans have made a great art of disconnect about what it is we actually eat. I've always been an animal lover. As a little boy, I used to collect newspaper articles about animals. I'd watch TV documentaries about animals. I had lots of pets, and I really wanted to be a vet when I grew up. I never made the connection between the food I ate and the animals. In fact, I lived in ignorant bliss for 25 years before I started putting two and two together and finding out about how my food was produced. I think it's karma, in a way, that I now share my life with some of the survivors of the poultry industries. Before I stopped eating animals, chicken was my favourite meat. I loved eggs and I didn't care how they were produced. If duck was on the menu, that's what I'd order. And turkey always made it for a great sandwich. Poultry are the most exploited animals in Australia and indeed the world for humans. According to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organisation, more than 90% of the land-based animals slaughtered for humans each year are chickens and ducks are the next most slaughtered. I don't know what shocked me more as I began to learn about the food I loved. That chickens can be kept in cages to lay eggs and each only have the space of an A4 piece of paper to live in. That ducks, despite being aquatic birds, are kept in sheds where they don't have any water at all to swim in or to properly clean themselves or that turkeys are bred to be so big, the only way they can reproduce is with human assistance, which requires the farm workers to masturbate the male turkeys to collect their semen and artificially inseminate the females. That we place such little value in poultry is evident by some of the practices we allow to happen. The egg industry, for example, without fear of prosecution, can implement pain and suffering on millions of hens each year by a process known as de-beaking. And this is a process that involves the beaks losing part of their beak, an operation which is done without anaesthetic or pain relief. It is a process which can also be carried out on turkeys and ducks and has been proven to show long-term chronic pain in those birds as well as signs of depression. Now, the defenders of the industry say it's necessary because the birds are aggressive, but poultry aren't naturally aggressive. They only become aggressive out of frustration, and that frustration comes from the ways they're farmed, the confinement systems. Put yourself in their place. What would you do if I told you that you're not leaving here today, you're actually spending the next 12 months exactly where you are? That's the amount of space you're going to have for the next 12 months. I reckon frustration's going to brew. When you realise that you can't actually outstretch your hands, when you can't stretch your legs, when you can't properly clean yourself. And as a reaction, some of us are going to start lashing out at one another. That's human nature. Then there's the other untold story of the egg industry, and that's what happens to the male birds. 
And so the chickens that are used for the egg industry, whether it's the battery system, the barn system, or the free-range system, they're all hatched in hatcheries. And after they're about a day or so old, they get sexed. The girls are moved out to sheds where they spend about four months before they finally move on to whatever farm they're going to. Their brothers are thrown into plastic bags where some of them suffocate before they're gassed. Or they could be fed into a machine called a macerator, which will actually grind them up while they're still conscious. This is all legal, and no one bats an eyelid, because after all, they're just chickens. Roosters are the most disrespected of those beings us humans refer to as farm animals. Their lives just don't matter. Now, some people think the roosters are the birds that are used for the meat industry. They're the ones that people buy in the supermarkets. But they're not. That's a completely different bird. It's a bird called a broiler, and it's been genetically bred to grow much quicker than nature intended and they get slaughtered when they're five to seven weeks old. And it results in a bird that looks kind of Frankensteinish in appearance, has a big body, really big feet. Now, the turkey industry operates kind of similarly as well. And one turkey industry expert has actually said that if a human child grew at the same rate as a commercial turkey grows, at 18 weeks of age, that human child would weigh 227 kilograms. Now, those of you who might have chickens in your backyard or you've spent some time with chickens will know how sociable they can be. Apart from being very sociable animals, studies have shown that chickens have better cognitive skills than cats, dogs and some primates. Researchers at Sydney's Macquarie University have declared chickens the most underrated animals on the planet after discovering their complex communication skills. Chickens have the ability to remember us and their experiences with us. They also have the ability to recognise up to 100 individuals in a group by physical characteristics. And if you think turkeys are silly, that's just a myth. They actually have great eyesight, great hearing. Like chickens, they have very well-developed vocabularies. They can recognise each other through their voices, and they can actually communicate their emotions to one another. And they do this through their snood, which is the fleshy bit that hangs down from their foreheads. And it actually changes colour according to their emotional state. The girls at a poultry place can sometimes get quite annoying, because they'll come up to me and they get under my feet and almost trip me over as I'm walking. A lot like your pet dog or your pet cat can do when they want your attention. I sometimes like to think that's them trying to thank me for giving them a good life. And then sometimes I actually stop myself and think, maybe I should be the one thanking them for what they've given me. When I first saw my images of battery hens, I felt empathy, because I identified with those hens, trapped in those cages where they can't show any of their natural instincts. And at that time in my life, I felt the same way. But my cage was of my own making. I had allowed society to force me into it, and by the time I realised I was trapped, I lacked the strength and courage to break free for many years. As an animal advocate, I could be out on the streets telling people how their eggs are produced and where their meat comes from, but I just couldn't tell the world anything about me. It started developing into this internal conflict. In those dark days when I was trying to come to terms with my sexuality and seriously contemplating that ending my life was the best solution, it was my desire to do something on behalf of those hens that kept me going. Today, I'm an out and proud gay man, just as much as I am an unashamed advocate for some of those beings my fellow humans feel the need to eat. 
a poultry place is a manifestation of this. It's a safe haven for some of the world's most abused animals. It's not a farm, and if anyone refers to it as a farm, I quickly correct them. To me, the word farm evokes an image of a place where non-humans are ultimately exploited. Whereas at a poultry place, the residents are free to live their lives without the expectation of having to give something to me back. But the girls and boys at a poultry place give me heaps back. Affection, companionship, and they provide heaps of entertainment. Imagine how you would feel if you woke up one morning and all of a sudden your whole life had changed and you could now do the stuff that you've always wanted to do but was never capable of doing. I get to see that quite often nowadays. The Peking duck splashing in a pond of water for the first time ever in his or her life. A battery hen, the first time she comes out of the cage, the first thing she does, she stretches her wings out. She's never been able to do that before. She'll pick up her foot and she scratches under a wing, again, first time. With her pathetic stump of a beak, she'll try to preen herself. But she hasn't got many feathers to preen because she's been kept in that cage. While her feathers will grow back, her beak won't. But that doesn't stop her from picking up straw and making a nest where she might lay an egg. And when she's finished that, she goes outside. And she scratches in the dirt. And she creates a hollow in the ground. And she gets in and she dust bathes. That's how she cleans herself. She's doing all this under the sun, first time ever in her life. And they're not alone. The big birds, the broilers and the turkeys, they have as much zest for life, despite their size. And unfortunately, their size is going to eventually end up with them developing mobility issues or fatal heart and respiratory conditions. That can't be stopped. That's just the way they're bred. But they still have a zest for life. They still want to go out there and dust bathe like their ex-battery hen friends. But their dust bathing behaviour is a bit more... Well, it's not as delicate, put it that way. <laughs> when they get excited, they do this funny little run and flap of the wings dance to try to hold their balance as they run across the paddocks to see where they're going. And if I'm out in, outside playing music, the turkeys will come and join me in a sing-along. And thankfully, they are appreciative, as I am, of 1980s pop sensations, Bucks Fizz. The theme of this year's TEDx conference is Uncharted. Uncharted is described as unexplored and unknown. In the 15 years I've been living hands-on with the rescued and unwanted, I've had the great privilege of introducing many people to live poultry. For most, it's the first time they've met a chicken, a duck or a turkey. Everyone goes through the same experiences. They're surprised at how social the birds are. They're surprised at the structures that exist amongst the flocks. They're shocked by some of the physical scars they still carry. Many are surprised when they're approached by a duck, a chicken or a turkey for a hug or a pat. They're shocked when one of them is cheeky enough to jump into a lap because that's the kind of behaviour they expect from the family dog or the family cat, not a bird they call dinner. For some, it is an eye-opening experience, for others, a life-changing one. If you've never spent any time with a chicken, I urge you to try to seek someone out who has some. And explore the experience. See where it leads you. Go into some uncharted territory. See what happens. Because you never know where it might lead you. And what decisions you might make as a result. Thank you.